Hi, my name is Sarah J, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm a member of the Self-Advocacy Council at Surrey Place, and I'm also involved in advocacy work outside of Surrey Place. I love to sing, and I belong to two choirs. I'm going to talk to you about my lived experience having a learning challenge and a mental health condition. At times, these can be restricting and frustrating, but with the help of my family, friends, and other supporters like my psychotherapist and psychiatrist and my personal support worker, I lead a full and rewarding life. I'd like to share with you the things that are important to me, including some of my achievements, some of my challenges, and what I've learned from them, and some accommodations that have helped throughout my life. My self-advocacy activities provide outlets where I can be very open about having a disability. I refer to my disability as an invisible disability. You wouldn't be able to tell that I had one just by looking at me. We're advocating for people with disabilities who might not feel they have a voice because they have a disability and are afraid to speak up and have their rights acknowledged. I love giving people that opportunity. You may have a disability, but you have the right for your voice to be heard. You need to know that you are not being silenced. I'm actually in a video that's called Time for Change from the Respecting Rights Group. When someone gets bullied, it's almost like they feel the world is against them and they aren't winning. I was singled out in grade school because I was in a special ed education classroom and that made some of the kids see me as different. I still have vivid memories of having very few friends at that time. I felt like it was me against the world. Being bullied has left scars in the form of memories that won't ever go away. With many others, this could also affect one's self-esteem. I remember not wanting to go to school because I had nowhere to hide. At the time, a few friends had my back and I'm still in contact with one of them. It got better when I went to high school because I had more friends that stood up for me and my confidence and self-esteem improved. I actually looked forward to going to high school. I have many friends that I'm still in contact with to this day. If there's anything I've taken away from the experience, it's that if you're being bullied, you're by no means alone. Overcoming it has given me strength and resilience and a lot of compassion and empathy towards others. When I was being bullied, I felt helpless. Four or five years ago, talking about bullying, I'd be in tears. Today, it's the exact opposite. I don't want to back down unless I absolutely have to. It's given me confidence. When I see someone who's being bullied, I want to stand up for them. Being an advocate, I want to help others who may feel alone or worthless. I don't want anyone to feel the way I felt in grade school. A lot has changed since I openly came out as being gay. When I first came out, they hadn't really paid much attention to the pronouns. When I came out, it was pretty accepting, but now it's more accepting because of so many other things that have been added. Before I fully came out, believe it or not, I was shy about it. It was only after Ellen DeGeneres publicly came out that I gained confidence to fully come out comfortably. I have been one of the more fortunate people because my entire family on both sides have been more than 100% supportive along with my friends. Coming out has never been easy, as in college when I was talking about it with friends, others overheard and I got gay bashed very badly. In the end, I had to leave college. Talking about that now, I realize that experience has only made me stronger. 
when at the time I felt so weak. Yes, it's become that much more supportive, but unfortunately, there is still a lot more to be done. For someone who is struggling to come out, it helps if they have an outlet where they feel comfortable. All it takes is to have someone listen. There's a character in a program I watch who sees the good in everybody and tries to make the best out of every possible situation. In a certain way, I feel I'm a female version of that character because if there's a bad situation, I try my very best to turn it into a more positive outcome. I don't like it when I see people who are sad. When I see this, it often impacts my mood. As I'm so empathetic, it's hard for me not to take on other people's emotions. If people I know are in conflict, it's hard for me to navigate that and I get flustered. If I feel I'm in the middle and I need to pick sides, that's really tough on me. I can see they're both unhappy. I don't like to give up on friendships. It's very hard for me to close the door on a friendship and walk away, but mentally I have to do what's best for me. Sometimes I fear setting boundaries because there could be negative backlash, but my psychotherapist has helped me to set healthy boundaries to separate myself from situations like these. Sometimes I have a hard time talking about my challenges, so I also do a lot of personal reflection through writing. Be happy more and angry less. Be kind more and cruel less. Be positive more and negative less. Life is precious, so live every day like it's your last and never take it for granted, for you never know what tomorrow may bring. Thank you. Be kind to one another. Thanks for watching.